Okay, so in this video, we're simply going to look at this basic application of binomial, proving that whenever we have n choose r plus n choose r minus 1 is always going to be the same as n plus 1 choose r. So this is a basic application of proving one of the rules of uh, binomial equations. Uh, remember, recall that you learned to say, uh, let's have this reminder here to say whenever you have n choose r, this becomes n factorial, then n minus r, and r factorial. This is what you learned, right? And you said this is only true whenever r is less than or equal to n, and both r and n are positive integers. That's the condition for this formula to work. They both have to be positive, and r has to be less than or equal to n. You know how to do this. You solved this. And you know what n factorial means, meaning we reduce it. So if I give you n factorial, you know what this means. This becomes n times n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, until you reach the last value, which is supposed to be 1. This is what we mean by n factorial, right? Uh -huh. So with this information, we can now prove uh, the left hand side to be the right hand side and we're going to start with the right hand side so the proof that we are interested in what we need to to check okay so start with the right hand side we said uh, n choose r plus n r minus one this gives us n plus one r so for those doing 1100, uh, you you only be asked to show. And when they say show, we simply uh, use numbers. You can choose n to be anything. But for those doing 1100, you have to do the trivial way of proving using the letters that we have. So we'll start with our right-hand side, which is n plus 1 choose r. So we're going to say right-hand side. So uh, we start with our right-hand side. Our right hand side is n plus 1, choose r. This is the same as n plus 1 factorial. Then we have n plus 1 minus r. We say this minus this, right? That's what we say. Factorial. Then we put the guy which is down, which is r factorial. We leave it. So this is our right hand side. We keep it. You've seen this guy, right? Then now we we're going to start with the left hand side. This is now where I need you to pay attention. So your left hand side, we have n choose r, then we have n r minus 1. We are supposed to combine these two to obtain the, the right hand side. That's basically what we need. Uh, so this is simply going to become, this here is going to become n factorial, then we have n minus r factorial then we have r factorial plus this part here is simply going to be n factorial then we have n minus r minus 1 factorial then we have r minus 1 factorial so this stage is okay Hope you're able to see and follow through. This this should be okay. We're just using the same equation of n choose r, the same format. That's basically the, the, the first thing that we do, express it like this. Then here we try to simplify. This is going to become, this is two maintains. This is going to be n choose r. This is n minus r factorial, this is r factorial, plus on the other side, this becomes n factorial. This is, uh, here we multiply with a negative, negative times r, that's going to be n minus r, then plus a 1, we have a factorial, then this is uh, r minus 1 factorial, then this is going to become uh, n factorial, we have n minus r factorial and r factorial plus this part here is going to be n factorial. 
n plus 1, so just write n plus 1 close to each other, then minus r, then factorial, then we have r minus 1, factorial, that's what you have. So hope this is okay at this stage. We haven't done anything fancy, the only thing that we did is to switch the r and the 1, I just brought the 1 in front, close to n, and took the arrow this side to obtain this, right? That's basically what we did. We haven't done anything uh, big or anything that's going to change any particular part. It's just rewriting it, rearranging it. Then now, the most important part comes in. We are looking for the common denominator of these two guys that we have here, the, these two guys. So we'll say... The common denominator here, this is a confusing part that people always uh, find this a bit challenging. So between n minus r and n plus 1 minus r, the one that's big is n plus 1 minus r. So I'll say that again. What is big between n minus r and n plus 1 minus r? I mean, what is big between n minus r and n plus 1 minus r? This guy is big, right? So meaning between these two, I'll write n plus 1 minus r. This is what you have. Then what is big between r factorial and r minus 1 factorial? r factorial is big, right? That's basically what we have. So this is how we get the common denominator. We choose the bigger portions, right? The bigger parts. Then if you're okay with this, we proceed by dividing this part here down. We say this, let me use a different color. So we say, how many times does R factorial go into R factorial? The R factorial will cancel, right? How many times does this part go into this part? It will be n plus 1. So how do I know this? This is n plus 1 minus r factorial. There's an r factorial. We're saying this part, which is down, this is the part I've written here, divided by this part down here, which is n minus r factorial and r factorial. The r factorial will go, will cancel out. The top part is the same as n plus 1 minus r then subtract 1 from this guy. This is going to be n minus r factorial. Then you have n minus r factorial. This guy cancels, meaning leaving us with this. So meaning this goes in this guy, n plus 1 minus r times. So now we'll get this part and multiply it by the top part there, which is n factorial multiplying n plus 1 minus r. That's what you have. This cancels with that. R minus 1 into R factorial is simply R because R factorial, R minus 1 factorial, this is the same as R and R minus 1 factorial, R minus 1 factorial, this part cancels, we just have R. So this on top is the same as N factorial multiplying R. Then from here on top, on the numerator part, we can factorize n factorial because it's common. We can let it be. So we can let this be n factorial. Then we say n plus 1 minus r plus an r this side. Everything over n plus 1 minus r factorial and r factorial. This here on top is the same as n factorial and n plus 1 because negative r and positive r will cancel out. So down we just have n plus 1 minus r factorial and r factorial. If you notice, this exactly is going to become, uh, if I give you 7 factorial times 8, this is the same as 8 factorial, right? Because 8 factorial is the same as 8 times 7 factorial, isn't it? So the top part is the same as n plus 1 factorial because n plus 1 is bigger than n. It's like a 7 factorial and an 8. would rather just write 8 factorial because 7 is smaller than 8. So this is what you are going to get.
n plus 1 minus r factorial and r factorial. This exactly resembles the right hand side. If you look at it, go back, we check uh, our right hand side. Remember the right hand side. If you notice, this whole part that we have here is what we've gotten on the other side. This is exactly the same as this side here, this part here. It's exactly the same as this, meaning we have shown that this becomes the right hand side, hence proven. This is basically how you're going to do it. Some people would finish it off by writing it as uh, this whole thing is the same as n plus 1. Choose r. If you write this, it gives you back that, which is equal to our right hand side. So that's basically how you prove uh, this particular question that people have been asking. It's simply the application of the first formula that you learned, the n choose r expression. Just uh, a quick illustration how you can show this is by letting, let n be n a number, let's say 5, let r be n a number, let's say 3. Where there's n, put a 5, 3. This is 5, 3 there, 3 minus 1, that's a 2. We're simply saying when you solve this, it's the same as a 5 plus 1, that's a 6, and a 3. So we're saying someone who solves this will get the same answer as someone who gets this. That's basically what this identity tries to justify. Yeah, so hope you have gotten something. This is how you basically prove this. If you have any questions, you can feel free to WhatsApp me from your tutorial sheet. If you have anything challenging, you can WhatsApp me on this number. Make sure you send an attempt of what you, you have tried before you ask any particular question. So this is the line you can use if you didn't get anything or there's a part that you need to screenshot and ask for clarity. Yeah, which part, whichever was confusing.